everybody. Great to be back with you. I'm Dr. Heath Robinson, and we're continuing with our series on Adobe Illustrator for Cartographers. We were looking at different ways to represent political boundaries on our map, and I showed you a very basic way when you're coloring in solid colors, but I want to show you a more advanced way that uses our blur tool and is very effective, and I see it a lot on different maps, when you need to be sure that the interior of your political phenomenon are a very very light color, even white, in order to make sure that whatever you're trying to show within them shows up very well. I noticed again that Imus Geographic used this particular technique or something similar to it uh, on their map of the United States and I've seen this technique or some variation of this technique on lots of different maps. It's an important technique. It's a very cool technique and again something you can't do in analytical GIS software. So let's get busy. I backed all the way out by the way to my basic countries layer which I had done. I just went through and did a whole bunch of undos so that I am back to a situation where I have Control Z, my three different polygons making up the mainland over there in my countries layer. Now what I want to do is I want to turn the boundary of each one of these a certain color and then sort of blur it with the blur tool so that it goes into white. That way each country looks like it's a particular color but that leaves the interior clean for other things that I might want to do with it. So let's go ahead and get started with that. In order to create this effect we're going to use that outline stroke tool again. I love it. It's really fantastic to do effects like these and other things when you get in trouble when you can do something very easily with a line. You need that object to be a polygon. No problem. Outline stroke you got polygons. So let's see what we can do here. Last time when I gave you the example of the very basic color shading, you got the effect and you could see what was going on, but I probably should have bumped up the weight and needed to, would have needed to if I were continuing along with that map. So I'm going to do that first this time. I'm going to go ahead and bump up the weight of these boundaries to go ahead and make them a bit more prominent. And that's especially actually important in this case with this technique we're about to use. Because the last technique we had the entire polygon filled in with color anyway, so you could still see the different countries that we had. But this time, we're not going to have that. So the countries, the political boundaries, are going to be represented by the very the dark shading at the edge. So it's important that it be thick and be there. Remember that when we do this, we're only going to be using half. We're only going to be using the interior half of the line that I'm drawing now, or making more thick now. So however thick you make it, remember that it's actually only going to be half as thick on the final map. You can see that because I'm bumping up the weight, you can see the political boundary spilling out into the ocean here over my frame here. It doesn't look like it's doing anything over here because this polygon's laying on top of it. Maybe 20. That would give me a 10, 10 points inside. Maybe 24. I'm going to go with that and we'll see how it looks. I've got a nice thick line now. Now what I want is to get rid of everything that is not inside my boundary. The first thing I probably should have done is gone ahead and copied that. I can copy that now because I will need to be able to get back to that shape to paste in front to use my Pathfinder tools. I'll have to bump its weight back down but oh well. Now that I have this shape with this thick outline what I'm going to do is go ahead and outline its stroke. Now I have a bunch of polygons that are grouped together. I'm going to ungroup them. Click here and press delete. That gets rid of the interior color there. Now all I'm left with is a polygon that looks like that outline that's been bumped up. I see a couple of different problems here that I'd like to fix. I don't want to take on. This, for whatever reason, as I was bumping it up, became a very sharp point. This looks like a great use for the delete anchor point tool. And if I just click right there, it deletes that anchor point. That's going to look much, much better. And then, now that's not going to be used. Uh, but this might. So I want to see what's going on over here. Oh, I got some weird points in here. Let me see what happens when I delete some of them. So I don't need all this complex geometry. I just need... I'm just going to go through here and delete those anchor points. That way I have a solid object. 
That looks pretty good. I could do the same thing over here, but it, it's not going to matter quite as much. But at least that way I have the clean shape. It always yells at you if you don't exactly touch an anchor point. Okay, well that's good enough. I know I could clean up over here. But I, this is going to be deleted anyway. Zooming back out and seeing what I'm doing. Alright, so there I go. Here is my country. And I want to make it that purple color, but I want to do it with a fade into white. I'm going to go paste in front. Make sure nothing is selected. That way it's in front of everything. Paste in front. And I want to bump it down. I think the original was three. There we go. That's looking better. That's the shape we're going to clip out. But actually, I can just turn off the entire stroke so it doesn't matter. Now here, what I want to preserve is the intersection. I want to preserve what's intersecting, because I don't care about this. This is outside in the water. This is not the land. I want to get rid of that. What I want to keep is what's between this line right here and that interior line that's showing up red. That's what I want to preserve, very similar to what I did last time. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to make sure that the main shape is selected. And what I want to preserve is the intersection with the Pathfinder tools. There. That's what I wanted. I can click off of that. I need another copy of the polygon though, so I'm going to go paste in front. This is where I can say three point. I'm going to send that to back. Arrange, send to back. Now that shape right now, that outline shape which I had intersected, right now is the same color, but look what happens if I make it, let me just make it an arbitrarily dark color. Okay, that's pretty close to what I want. Not exactly, but close. It's not exactly what I want because this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier, that it looks like that country ends. It looks like this political unit, whatever it happens to be, ends up here at the frame. And I don't want that. If I just stopped right there, it would look like this were just one political unit. But I don't want that. I want the color to go up here to the frame over here and over here and run off the edge so it looks like the political unit continues up off the map. There are multiple ways that I can accomplish that. Just as you're probably figuring out by now, there are multiple ways I can accomplish lots of things in Illustrator. But what I want to do is just hack out that line that's up against the frame and I'm going to use the Pathfinder tools to do that. I'm going to drag a rectangle on top of what I want to be gone. This works in this particular case because of the shape especially. So I want to get rid of everything inside that rectangle. I've got the rectangle selected. I've got the outline selected right there. And then I'm going to uh, subtract what's in front. Voila. That will work for this purpose. You might be a little bit unhappy with this edge. I'm a little bit unhappy with that edge too. I'm about to blur it so it probably won't matter, but I could come through there and adjust it with the pencil tool. Now that sort of looks like the a thick boundary for that particular polygon. That doesn't look great, uh, but it will look a lot better here in a second, but you can see the effect here. I'm going to select the interior polygon and I'm going to turn it the stroke off and then I'm going to turn the interior white. Because I'm going to make it white so that I can make sure that I can very easily see what's on the inside. And then here, let me make sure that I have a copy of that. And then I'm going to select that outline. This is the purple country, if you remember. So I'm going to find a nice shade of purple. Maybe that right there. Does that look good? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now, let me show you a little secret right here. Because what I want to do is I want to blur that boundary between the purple and the white. That way it looks like the purple is just gradually going into the white with a gradient. You might be tempted at this point to blur the purple. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to select the purple and then go Effect, Blur. I'm going to use the Gaussian Blur. And again, you can select exactly how much blur you want. If I want, I can preview it and see what I'm doing. 
find some amount of blur that you like, maybe I like that, say OK. This is getting close. It looks really, really fuzzy around there on the edge, but let me zoom in here so you can see what's going on. The bl purple here is indeed blurred, but it's blurred from the center, and so it gets lighter both toward the edge of the land here and toward the interior of the polygon. That's not the effect that I'm looking for. I want it to be very dark around here at the edge of the polygon and I want it to only get lighter toward the white. I don't want it to be light over here on the coastline. I'm going to undo so that I'm back to my solid purple. What I'm going to need is a white shape that is just from the frame up to the purple. If I select in here you can see that I've got a, a, a polygon that goes all the way out that's sitting under it that's white. Actually we may have deleted a polygon like that earlier on so there may be a faster way to get to it but I'm just going to copy that and then paste in front with that selected so I know that it's sitting exactly on top of it. That way I can easily select the purple and the white. White and the purple. Yep, both of those. And then what I want is to subtract the front. I will need to make a copy of the purple and so I'm going to do that and then I need to make sure that I have the white selected and I do and make sure that I have the purple selected and then subtract the front with the pathfinder. Now I've got a white shape if I were to put a black border around it that is the interior shape. See what I've got there? I'm going to turn that off though and I'm going to say paste all the way in front that border and then I'm going to actually I'm going to bring to front arrange bring to front that white shape because it's going to blur into the purple there so I'm going to blur the white shape and uh, I might as well preview what's going on here you can begin to see it right there as I increase the amount of blur on the white you can see how it's blurring the purple this is the effect that I want. I don't want to go too far. Maybe about maybe about a 25 pixel blur would be okay for my map. Now you can see that I'm beginning to achieve the effect that I want. I'm trying to get this smooth transition of the purple into the white. I don't quite have it yet. I'm getting close, but I don't quite have it yet, and I'll tell you why I don't have it. That is because, remember when you blur something, you get a blur on both sides. And so I'm blurring this shape right here. I'm blurring this shape. So you can see that I'm getting the bleed over the overlap, which I didn't want when I was working with the frame, but that's exactly what I do want when I'm working in this situation. But it's also blurring it inside. You can't see because it's white. But I've got this symmetrical kind of blur going on around uh, the inside and the outside of this line and that's sort of messing with my effect. It's still making this uh, this line here too sharp. I don't want it to be that sharp. There are a couple of different ways that I could handle this situation. Let me show you one method that I could use. I, this is not the one that I prefer but it certainly will show you what's going on. If I want that blur to be darker, what I need is that blur to be darker to sort of cut that sharp edge of the purple there. So I could take that white shape that is blurred, copy it, paste it in front, let me click off. Now you're seeing how that, that blur is beginning to soften that purple line. That was just one this is pasted in front, I'm getting an increasingly blurred line on the interior while it's preserving that harsh line on the outside, which is what I want. If I do that again, paste in front, that's looking much closer to the kind of effect that I want. I'm getting this very sharp edge here and because of the overlapping blurs I'm beginning to get uh, the kind of thing that I want. I have to work up here on the edge. I'm noticing that's not working but that's close to what I'm looking for but really it's not quite I want there to be a bit more purple so I'm going to use the reverse solution let me undo that and undo that so I'm back to just the interior blur what I need to do is select this purple I believe that if I select here and if I I believe that since I've got that white selected if I right click and go to select next object below 
Uh, yes, that I will have a hold of the purple, and that's what I want. I want this purple, and instead of trying to build up the white, I just want to extend the purple into the white. The purple is sitting behind the white, so I don't have to be real careful about the shape that I'm drawing. So I'm just going to draw a shape to the interior of the white. There. That's the effect that I'm trying to achieve. Whoop. Now I'm going to have to fix over there. I'm going to have to fix right there. But you can see down here that this is, this is a great effect. I love this effect. You can tell that this is the purple country. It comes out to this edge. And then there's this very soft gradient that goes inside. Since I extended a solid color purple, uh, it just goes right under that uh, white blur right there. Gives a fantastic effect. There are a couple of things that I'm going to have to fix over here at the edge because this is blurring out and so it's, you're beginning to see this over here at the edge. I can probably fix that by just putting in yeah that makes that corner a little bit harsh but if I go to effect and I go ahead and reapply the blur yeah then you'd never know that looks pretty good. I'm probably going to have to do the same thing over here. Looks pretty reasonable. You can see what I'm going for right there. I really like this effect with the political boundaries. It's really, really going well. I'm going to go ahead and do the other countries as well. What's important to remember when you start to do the other countries is that you use the exact same weight when you do this for all of the outlines when you bump it up in order to do the outline select. That will make sure that the width of each political boundary is completely consistent between each political unit. Mine was 24 inches, that's what I'm going to stick with. I'm going to do something a little bit inconsistent here that I don't usually do and speed up the video, but I'm just going to replicate that process with each of my political units in order to... But I'm just going to replicate that exact same process with all of my political units in order to uh, designate their political boundaries. So I may move a little bit faster here. All right, so there is my ultra-fast, quick and dirty way of going about uh, shading in these, trying to come up with four different countries here. I put an independent island, sort of left it green. There may be in some ways faster ways to go about producing this effect. Maybe you thought of some as you were going through, but I think this is a very powerful effect, uh, a very neat effect, and one that uh, you don't see a whole lot except on professional maps. And of course, that's the point of uh, this course, is to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator to produce professional maps. I'd also just like to point out that one thing that I did is I decided that it would look a little bit crisper if I put a one-point black line around everything. That way you'll be able to, uh, it looks a little bit crisper that way. You should be able to see that on the screen here. Everything is outlined with a one-point black line and then I do the color shading. So I really like the look of this. I, I think that uh, this can go forward. I uh, definitely uh, have lots of space now to put in uh, content uh, inside those roads you're working on, those cities, uh, and other things. So I'll leave it right here with you. So please experiment with this technique, experiment with related techniques, and see what you can produce. I'm excited to see it. See you next lesson.